in South Vietnam's capital city of Saigon on Saturday morning. All night Friday, the guns of the revolutionary forces had been firing on the loyal government troops and their installations. All night, the shells had fallen on or near the presidential palace, where President No Dinh Diem and his advisor brother No Dinh Nhu refused to surrender. Snipers were everywhere. The city streets rang with the rapid explosion of mortar shells over a background of shouts and cries. Tank guns were firing and submachine guns. The revolutionary forces had clearly moved according to a well-constructed plan, and they carried it out with skill, sealing off sections of the noisy, smoking city and neutralizing the government forces neighborhood by neighborhood. It was planned with intelligence. That would be a soldier's view. But even among soldiers, the battle broke down into little pieces and became a man with a gun, guarding a man who had had a gun, but now knelt on the... At the moment, the anti-aircraft batteries and machine gun batteries all around town are opening up, but from here you can't tell on what. All American personnel have been ordered off the streets, and uh, here at the embassy, reports are trickling in very slowly. Saturday in Saigon. The battle for the city went on for 18 hours, and most of it was centered on the presidential palace, where two men stubbornly held out until the end. This is the palace. Now there is a lull in the fighting. Just after 6.30 in the morning, Saturday, Saigon time, a white flag fluttered out a window of the presidential palace and the shooting ceased. Outside, the tanks were gathered. Then the Marines went in. These are Marines, the men who were in the forefront of the battle on the revolutionary side. moving through a door that obviously is strong and obviously was meant for defense. That's the white flag, a Marine in scorn, waving it out the window. Like sightseers, these young men in battle dress, camouflage uniforms, walk through the rooms of the palace. First looking and then taking. No one has said officially what happened to the two men who held out there so long, President Jim and his brother and advisor. The story in Saigon is that they escaped from this palace through a tunnel, perhaps dressed as Catholic priests, and then were seized by soldiers three hours later in a Catholic church. President Jim killed by gunfire, his brother killed by stabbing. That is the unofficial version. It's over. It's over. A long nightmare is over. A criminal dream in which the United States too long pretended that a family regime like Diem's, a family tyranny, really represented the people of the country. These are the people. The students, the ordinary people of Saigon cheering the troops, giving them bread, giving them bananas.
the gift of the people of Saigon to their liberators. These troops have been fighting all night, they're hungry, and the people know it. That was Peter Kalischer again in Saigon, and this is Robert Trout again at Idlewild Airport. All these scenes after the 18-hour battle was over, the aftermath of the revolutionary fighting in the capital city. Burnt out military vehicles, wreckage, barbed wire, a one-way do not enter sign in front of the presidential palace, twisted. The debris of war, even though a short battle. There are weapons to be collected and to be stacked now that the fighting is done. Buildings damaged by gunfire. And cars, too. And men. The crowds are pleased, though, and for a while the government let them run wild. Through the streets at first aimlessly, then dancing, dancing the western dances that had been forbidden by Madame Nu, the tango and the twist in the streets of Saigon. That was a statue that was erected to three legendary sisters in South Vietnam's history. It was said to resemble Madame Nu, and it was torn down. Offices and homes that belonged to some government employees were set fire. This is not the wreckage of war, but the wreckage of the jubilant celebration afterward. Books are being burned. The bookstore was said to have been owned by the Archbishop, who was one of the brothers of the late President Diem, the Archbishop who is now in Rome. A small witness. part of the statue again. Finally, after many hours, the crowds are told by the troops to behave, to restore order, and to stop the general celebration. No one seems too concerned. Neither the crowds nor the troops. The city of Saigon, this is how it looked. When the battle was over, and the soldiers, smiling half-heartedly, tried to quiet the jubilant celebration that followed.